my name is Simon Ola and I'm a pipeline developer at Acrys. We started using Houdini in 2012 for effects and we're really impressed with the new possibilities of working node-based uh, and procedurally. So in 2014, we then also moved our scene assembly and lighting to Houdini. And that worked very well for many years, but um, at some point projects got increasingly complex and we were looking for uh, more scalable solutions. Luckily at the time, um, Side Effects announced that they were working on a new product and that it was based on USD. So we dedicated one and a half years uh, building that new pipeline. We then transitioned to our new fully USD based uh, pipeline with uh, Solaris at its core. I'm Andreas Giesen and I'm working as a VFX supervisor at RISE. Fallout is a TV series based on a game, so it takes place in a retro futuristic world with a lot of uh, monsters, creatures and awesome locations. Some of the shots we worked on uh, included this big uh, LA nuke sequence in the beginning with uh, large-scale effect simulations and also the VertiBird, which was this flying vehicle. And towards the ending of the series, we uh, created the whole final battle sequence, which was uh, very challenging. So with Fallout, we faced quite a few challenges. We had to build these extremely large environments and uh, make sure we can render them efficiently. Instead of just one explosion, we had uh, these multiple shots of multiple nukes being launched uh, over LA. And we had to uh, match and extend some very, very detailed props that were used on the set. Uh, Houdini helped us a lot uh, to, to deal with these challenges, uh, especially to, uh, for the effects simulation, um, because we created like one big cache in the beginning and uh, using uh, USD and, and Solaris, we could easily offset uh, the cache right for every shot to, to make it work um, and also um, to add shot specific changes was really easy to do um, using our multi-shot workflow. I'm Jonas Sorgenfrei, I'm the head of FX at RISE. Red One is a comedy Christmas movie about the rescuing center and saving Christmas. The sequences included lots of environments like the Campus Castle or the Campus Slate and a lot of FX like portal effects, sand effects, fire effects or vehicle effects like transformations. One of the biggest focus areas of that show was character FX. We created three digi doubles, two trolls, one hellhound and one chicken. The challenges we faced on Red Run were to animate and render several different creatures, including a chicken, uh, for which we were finally able to test out the new feather tools. With Houdini's new feather toolset, based on tessellation shaders, we were able to preview the feathers in a high amount of detail in the viewport while art directing them for the incoming animation from USD. So there are so many benefits to USD. Um, first, there's scalability. Um, geometry instancing is at the heart of USD. So um, we can now build these extremely large and complex environments more easily. Um, then there's variance. Um, with USD, it's, it's very easy to set up different variations of the exact same asset. And then there's the whole layer system that lets us non-destructively add layers of one department to uh, the, the content that was built by previous departments. So with the switch to USD, we've basically future-proofed our pipeline foundation. Um, by now, USD has been uh, adopted by so many companies and it's likely gonna be the dominant uh, 3D format for the years to come. Um, but for us, it's not just USD, it's very much also Solaris. Um, Solaris acts as a node-based API. And so instead of writing tons of code, we really build a lot of HDAs and build template scenes that can then be chained uh, together and automatically processed. And I can say that without all those uh, tools in the Solaris USD pipeline at RISE, we couldn't have done it in this amount of time and achieving this level of quality. And having Solaris as the backbone of everything, um, we're quite confident that we'll be able to come up with a solution for any requirement uh, a future project might have.